Manuel Lands, by Charles Hoy Fort, Part 1, Chapter 8D. I think of the astronomers as occupying a little vortex of their own in the cosmic swoon in which wave all things, at least in this one supposed solar system. Call it swoon, or call it hypnosis, but that it is never absolute, and that all of us sometimes have awareness of our condition, and moments of wondering what it's all about and why we do and think the things that sometimes we wake up and find ourselves doing and thinking. Upon page 281, Old and New Astronomy, Richard Proctor wakens momentarily, and says, The agreement between these results seems close enough, but those who know the actual difficulty of precise time observations of the phenomena of Jupiter's satellites, to say nothing of the present condition of the theory of their motions, can place very little reliance on the velocity of light deduced from such observations. Upon pages 603 to 607, Proctor reviews some observations other than those that I have listed. Satellites that have disappeared, come back, disappeared, returned again so bewilderingly that he wrote what we have quoted. Observations by Gorton, Ray, Gombart, Secchi, Main, Grover, Smythe, McLean, Pearson, Hodgson, Carlisle, Simonton. And that is the last of his awareness. Proctor then swims back into his hypnosis. He then takes up the determination of the velocity of light by the physicists, as if they can be relied upon, accepting every word, writing his gospel, glorying in this miracle of science. I call it a tainted agreement between the physicists and astronomers. I prefer mild language. If by a method by which nothing can be found out, the astronomers determine that the velocity of light is about 190,000 miles a second, and if the physicists by another method found about the same result, what kind of harmony can that be other than the reekings of two consistent stenches? Proctor wrote that very little reliance could be placed upon anything depending upon Jupiter's satellites. It never occurred to him to wonder by what miracle the physicists agreed with these unreliable calculations. It is the situation that repeats in the annals of astronomy, a baseless thing that is supposed to have a foundation slipped under it, wedged in, or God knows how introduced or foisted. I prefer not to bother much with asking how the physicists could determine anything of the higher number of changes than 10 per second. If it be accepted that the physicists are right, the question is, by what miracle were the astronomers right, if they had very little to rely upon?